Welcome to a rainy, rainy, rainy day in Vermont. Uh, coming to you from Vermont, your host, Susan Lazar Hart, creator of the Congruent Living Academy and the Congruent Life Method. And welcome to our summer series where we're doing a deep dive, uh, doing the inner work, right? A lot of us have been told if you only get this, if you only look like this, if you only, if you only. Nobody ever talks about the inner work. Hey, Nicole, welcome, welcome. And the inner work is when I call doing the inner work, it's taking that moment, taking a refresh, creating a review of what's working for you, what's not working you from the inside out. So in our doing the inner work series, we're into part two of emotional intelligence and healing. So once again, welcome. I'm thrilled to have you here. If you're watching later, hashtag replay. If you're on live, come on in with your questions. You know me, I keep going. But when I see a question, I stop and we dive right in. So don't be shy. And if you have a question later, come on in later because I check in every day. So for any of you, have you been experiencing, um, especially lately, difficulties in, I'm going to say, managing your emotion? How many of you were taught you have to manage your emotion, right? <laughs> like, how many of you were told you're too sensitive? You're so emotional. And so the whole emotion thing has, got, has a really bad rap. I know emotional intelligence kind of seems like an oxymoron, but play with me today. It actually isn't. Um, how many of us are carrying emotional pain from the past and we bring it into the present and so we react and we don't even question where that reaction is coming from or we blame it on a past rather than willing to be present and ask, okay, so how can I change this? This actually isn't working for me. Uh, how does that impact your relationships with yourself, with others? So we're going to be playing with that. And so my question for you is, what if you could increase your self-awareness by understanding your emotions, by improving um, emotional regulation, shall we say, and resilience, by being actually resilient with the awareness of like, oh, that's what that's all about. Okay, now I have another choice. So we're going to deep dive into the realm of emotional intelligence and explore how it can actually empower us to heal and transform and actually unleash those inner powers that we have, that brilliance we have that shines from within. So I'm going to say right off the bat, emotional intelligence is a huge topic, right? I actually took a six-week course in it last winter. Uh, I can't cover everything on emotional intelligence in this short time we have together. But I'm going to be giving you some great self-check-ins, okay? Um, so I want you to take a moment now, go grab a pen, a paper, your journal, something to write on. And I'm going to be um, offering you uh, different ways of being, perhaps the way you're being now, perhaps the way you could be being. I'm, we're going to be doing a self-checklist right off the top of your emotional intelligence and so you know maybe you could give yourself between one and five how does this relate to you and this is just for you it's not about sending it in I'm not selling you anything this is just for you that's what these transformational motivational moments are all about it's how often do we actually take the time to be with us so this is at least if not now when if not on a Monday why not how how better to start your week than checking in with a transformational motivational moment so while I'm waiting for you to go get your books, just give me a high five when you come back, or your journals, or your papers. Um, I want to remind you that I do have a special gift for you. It's tying it in with this month's Doing the Inner Work. And it's a guided meditation that I've created for each topic. So there's a specific one created for this topic today about emotional intelligence. And just go to www.susanlazarheart.com forward slash guided meditations, all one word, guided meditations, all one word. And my VA has a capital G and a capital M. I don't know if it's necessary. I'm not a techie. Put a capital G and a capital M in if you want. Let's see what happens. Again, SusanLazarHeart.com forward slash guided meditations. And they'll be sent to you every week right into your inbox. And again, I yesterday I just created one for this today. So sign up for it. You'll get it tomorrow. So. Everybody back? Yeah? High signs? <laughs> what is emotional intelligence? Well, sometimes it can feel like, you know, we're on a roller coaster of emotions. Anybody ever have that sensation? And if the emotions are charged, we can't actually get off that roller coaster. We stay with it. We've been taught to stay with it. We've been taught to 
that there's a benefit to to letting the emotion take over, right? So what I'm going to suggest to you, the best time to get off the ride of that emotion is right at the beginning. Before it gains momentum, recognize it for what it is. Oh, I'm feeling this. Oh, this is what's going on. And now's the time with that awareness to clear out the old programming that is coming up. And how do we do that? We create a space. We listen. We observe and we release and that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So, once again, emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize your emotion. Instead of saying, I don't know, recognize it. Understand what these emotions are telling you, right? Because a thought creates a feeling, a feeling creates an emotion. Realize how these emotions affect you, because your primary relationship is with you, and all of those around you. So, what it is, is, is when you understand what it is that you're actually feeling, where it's coming from, and how to release it, you actually create your life in a way that gives you much more of you showing up every day in every way. So, get, here's your checklist. Is this you? A person with a high emotional intelligence is likely to name and express their feelings. Do you name and express your feelings easily so that you can understand and manage the stimulus, what created that? Are you able to identify the root cause rather than trying to deal with the symptom or the result? So the symptom or the result of something, if you're feeling upset, you might say, I'm so pissed off at this person. And you start to build it and build it and you build a story in your head and it's you're get, getting more and more outraged and you get more and more angry and you get more and more of the emotion and less and less of you and the brilliance of you showing up. Is that you? Because people with emotional intelligence are highly self-aware. They openly, they're openly expressive. So what I'm challenging you to do is to check in with yourself. What are you expressing? Are you expressing something that's creating greater? when you're emotional or are you expressing something that's creating less less of you showing up all right that's number one where are you with that are you a one or a five right do you express your feelings do you connect to your emotions um do you identify the root causes is that you number two do you know what you want and make plans to achieve your goals when you have a better understanding of what drives you you're more likely to understand what gives you pleasure and why. So this means you're more likely to identify your values and know the purpose of them in your life. So is that you? What do you give yourself? One, two, three, four, five. People with emotional intelligence who are working with this remain calm in challenging situations. By labeling what's going on, recognizing the emotion, People with emotional intelligence can learn to manage what's going on by allowing, their emo by not allowing their emotions not to hijack them. So this can help you remain calm while everybody else, they're just losing their heads, right? So are you that person who, when you walk into something, you know exactly what's need needed, uh, and especially in, in what we call an emergency, you just go for it, you do it, and you just move on. People with highly emotional intelligence can decode their emotions. Like, they practice understanding the meaning of any particular emotion and how to redirect the emotional response. So in other words, instead of taking it out on somebody else or yourself, you redirect it. You're able to recognize which emotions should be encouraged and which should be reconsidered. And I'm going to give you some examples of how to play with this afterwards. But this is just like your own self-check-in. So where are you with this? Do you, do you um, recognize what emotions to, should be encouraged, and which should be reconsidered, or do you just dive in and go for it? <laughs> One, two, three, four, or five. Again, this is just for you. People with emotional intelligence, they, they, they understand the cause of the stress, and they identify the signs. And they actually have an excellent chance of reducing the anxiety. You know, we all know that feeling. It's just like, right? Uh, we reduce the anxiety 
of stressful events by taking effective action. What's required here? What, being able to stop and ask a question. What is this? What can I do with it? Can I change this? Is this even mine? Is this true? Great question. When you're all Im involved in the emotional ro roller coaster, is the stimulus what I bought is real and true? Is this really true for me? And one of the great things about using your emotional intelligence is you learn to advocate for yourself. So do you, are you a self-advocator? One, two, three, four, five. Do you work well with others? Do you listen to others? People with emotional intelligence, they, they actually identify thoughts, feelings, and emotions and have that empathy to actually work with others. Bringing long-lasting, mutual rewarding relationships into play. They're more likely to notice signals that other people miss. Are you that kind of person? Do you notice, do you walk into a room and you go like, what's going on here? What's going on? Right? You're aware. Is that you? If you are, that shows that a high degree of emotional intelligence. Now, do you, do you, what we, it's what we do with these that counts. So again, when you walk into a situation, do you help people uh, do you respond quickly? Do you help people build trust and intimacy? One, two, three, four, five. Ah, I love this one. Do you learn from your mistakes and what other people, how they're creating? And when I say that is, do you, are you learning, f like everything is a, is, a, is, is a learning, right? Everything's a learning. There is nothing, what if there was nothing wrong ever, right? Everything's a learning. So it's like, what if there was nothing wrong? With, what if there was nothing? Hey, Gita, welcome. What if there was no mistake? A mistake is really a mistake. It's like, you know, when in cinema, when they take take one, and, no, okay, take two, <laughs> right? So, so it's, it's learn from this. Learn from it. It's just a choice. So don't, do you fall to pieces when somebody gives you their point of view? Are you, or are you willing to be emotionally intelligent and just be aware that that's just their point of view? And again, ask this question, is this really true for me? Here's a, here's a big one. Are you willing? Emotionally intelligent people are actually the voice of their heart, not the echo of, let's call it their ego, not the echo of what people see them doing, but they're actually the voice of their heart. You know, I'll, I'll often when I work with my clients, and I'll suggest, can you be with an open heart about this? Which, is mean, which means there's no judgment. Can you just be present? So people with emotional intelligence, again, is this you? Are you able to recognize and follow that quiet voice of their heart instead of listening to the demanding and voices that are coming in? You know, I often talk about the hubris that we surround ourselves with. So it, with emotional intelligent people, is that you? Again, is that a one, two, three, four, or five? Only you know. Uh, people with emotional intelligence learn to ask for help, right? Again, um, asking for help is a sign of wisdom and empowerment, not a sign of weakness. In this reality, we're taught it's a sign of weakness. And, and so we, t we tend to belittle ourselves. We are the only species on the planet, you've heard me say this before, that has decided we have to do this alone. <laughs> no, we are not alone. We never were. So focus on having at your, your intention instead of your unintended, right? So when you're emotionally intelligent, you're not dealing with the, the, the ups and downs and ups and downs. You're focused on what it is that you intend to create, not what it is you don't intend to create. So with emotional intelligence, you actually can take a pause, take a breath, learn to ask questions instead of reacting. Focus on what you need and you're asking to create, not on what everybody else is asking of you and for you and from you. So again, is that you? Are you able to, it's not, it's not about disassociating. It's about just being present and focus, taking a pause, focus. How do you start your day? Focus. 
you know, I've included, again, with this, my gift to you are these guided meditations as my um, challenge, my invitation to you to start your day in a way that gives you more of you, rather than starting your day off with a cup of coffee, an alarm clock, and a, and a to-do list from yesterday, where it won't, be, won't get it done from tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, it's about shifting and changing being with emotional intelligence. Again, what is emotional intelligence? It's about tapping into, in an intelligent way, what is this emotion? rather than letting the emotion lead you. It's about being present with the emotion. Like true joy comes from the inside out. Yeah? Would you agree? Yeah? Hearts or hands up on that one? Yeah. So, it's shift, it's focus, it's control. It's about being capable of influencing and controlling what it is you're asking to create in the world. And I don't mean controlling in a way that is a negative way. I mean playing with the energies. When I say, um, like when I use the word control for myself, it's about being present with what would be and what wouldn't be. And then choice, choice creates. That's my control system is to be in choice and be in the question rather than letting, feeling like the world has taken over, right? We always have choice. So. What was your score? Don't have to tell me. Keep it to yourself. Put it in here. Right? This is for you. Again, have a re-listen. Where did you score on this? Are, do, you, do you shift? Do you lose control of your focus? Do you take time to, for, to be personally and, and, and in gratitude for what you're creating? Because the truth is, there is no right or wrong. This, this is an opportunity for you to see how you fit into your life, right? Your life does not take charge of you. You're the, this is your one true precious life. So the, the, the truth is almost everyone has uneven levels of scores or whatever it is, the play that we were just doing in these categories. Some, for some of us, we have different levels of emotional intelligence depending on how we were brought up, what the information that we were given, what we use as our fallback, we all have different fallbacks, how much we shift and change, and the world is shifting and changing quickly. So what could have been you a week ago perhaps isn't you now. I know for me, huge amounts of change, huge amounts of change in the last week. And so it's about being present with what it is that you would like to create in this one true precious life. And consider where your strengths lie. Consider what you'd like to shift and change and improve. So as you go through your daily activities, make an effort to improve the areas that you'd like to shift in. And here, here's some initial steps. I promised you I'd give you a little quiz at the top start and then some steps. So raising your self-awareness to the point where you can objectively observe you cultivate self-awareness. That involves taking time to reflect on your thoughts, your feelings, and your behaviors. It enables us to identify patterns, look at patterns and triggers that may be holding you back. Again, doing the deep inner work is not a, a quick fix. Once you, it's a domino effect. I know for myself, I took this course this um, Saturday. It was from uh, United Kingdom. It started at five in the morning, my time. I'm up anyway. It was started at 10 their time and finished at seven, I guess. It started at my time, five, and finished at 12. Perfect. And it was all about channeling. It was about channeling with spirits, the light beings, the archangels. And it gave me a, a huge awareness of where I had been raised with unconditional love and where I hadn't been raised with unconditional love and how much judgment, when we're raised with, with conditional love, that's a sure way to make sure we're never emotionally intelligent. And so it wasn't about digging myself into a rabbit hole, it was more like, oh, that's where that comes from. That's where that judgment comes from. So that's where, for me, it's important to identify the patterns or the triggers. And by being self-aware, we then can recognize, oh, that's where that's coming from. And then have a choice. Now I, now I have choice. Once I realize that, it like opened a door. The second part of all of this is, is identify 
as I just noted to you, your root emotions, where they're coming from, what they're creating, and how they're creating. Emotional healing involves acknowledging and processing what it is that you're aware of that isn't working for you. Again, it's not about going down into a rabbit hole. It's about saying, oh, that. And we often need somebody to help us do that, right? Because what we're most aware of is often what isn't working, what is holding us back. And I'm encouraging you to tap into that and then let it go with an open heart. And journaling is a powerful tool for healing. You know, it allows us to express our emotions, gain insights. Every morning I have a meditation that I do and then I open my book and I, with my pen in hand and I ask my guides, what is it that you're asking of me to know today? And I just journal. Pay attention to how often you feel the same emotion. If it, if, it, if it keeps coming back and it's holding you back, it's not yours. Because <laughs> you're an infinite being who has the capacity to shift and change all the time. That's a sure sign, a signal to you that you're holding on to something you were taught to believe in. Right? Now remember from the ages of zero to seven or six, we're, we're this little vessel that takes in all the beliefs of all of those peoples who were... Uh, sent to us to feed us, clothe us, tell us they love us or not. Those are belief systems. Now, here now, you can ask, is this true for me? And that's when I say, understand the triggers. Name them. Work on reducing that threshold of your triggers. How do you do that? For myself, uh, again, I start with a meditation in the morning. I move my body. You know, whether you dance or go for a walk or go for a run or go for a bike or hike or ski or jump in the river and go for a swim, move your body, right? Your, 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 your body is made to move. When you move, all the chemicals shift and change. You do not stay the same. So it's not about regulating anything. It's about learning the techniques and exercises that you need. Some people learn to deep breathing, right, which helps calm the nervous system by practicing deep breathing during moments of anger or frustration, what can that shift for you? Here's an interesting one that I have that I learned from uh, Emotional Intelligence, the course that I took this past winter. What, and I actually was playing with it the other day. I was, I was like pissed off about something, of people that I'm working with, and I just stopped. I, I moved out of my office into the kitchen, and then I took both of these fingers and I just close my eyes and listen to my breath and, and just concentrating on the feeling of both of these fingers touching each other. Just concentrating on that feeling. Nothing else. Just nothing in my mind. Just how does that feel? And then I put all those fingers together again. Hearing my breath, concentrating on nothing but the pads of my fingers and how those feel. And then I put my whole hand together concentrating on nothing but my breathing and how that feels together. And then I asked myself, what's the closest sound that I can hear? And for me, it's the rain coming down on the windows. And as I tuck another deep breath, I asked myself, what's the farthest sound that I could hear? And that was a train far, far, far off in the village next to ours. Now that could have taken all of six or seven minutes. And if even if you're listening to me now, do you notice the shift and change in your energy? Right? That's about exploring a different perspective within you. It's a way of just being present, knowing you have the capacities to shift and change what isn't working for you. That's being intelligent. So, we've gone on quite a bit. Uh, today, again, it's not a, a topic I can cover all at once. It's huge. If you want to dive deeper with me, if you feel like, Susan, this, there's something here that's touching me that I, can, I, 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 I need this information. I would love to work with you on creating greater. Contact me, Susan at SusanLazarHeart.com or go to my website, www.SusanLazarHeart.com. It's all there. And I would love to, to dig deep with you and have a heartfelt conversation on what it is that you're asking to change and how can we change that together. Again, you're not alone, you never will. So, uh, any questions, anything popping for people? This was an, a little bit of a long one today. 
Hope I didn't ramble on too much. Uh, I love this, this topic of doing the inner work. I appreciate you all for popping in on the polls to let me know what you'd like to, to look into next. Thanks, Gita. Thanks for coming. Um, thank you all for showing up. Uh, this is a powerful explore, exploration of emotional intelligence and healing. Remember, by embracing emotional intelligence and doing the inner work, we unlock our capacities for personal growth, for healing, for transformation. So I encourage you to take what you learned today. Take one thing, if, if, if it's just this exercise, right? Take one thing and apply it to your daily life and then tell me how that works. Write it in the comment below. I love to hear from you, you know that. And together let's cultivate this, this intelligence and, and heal our wounds and create a life filled with joy, authenticity, and meaningful connections. And that first meaningful connection is the one you have with you. So until we meet again next week, sign up for the meditations, the guided daily guided meditations, my gift to you, susanlazarhart.com forward slash guided meditations. And I will be seeing you next week. Uh, live boldly, love great. And be that fearless leader you came here to be because the world needs more of you and that special sauce that only you have not less. Oh, thank you. Gita says, always a gift to listen to you speak and viewpoint on any topic. Mwah! I adore you. Thank you so much, Gita. Thank you. From my heart to yours, I appreciate that, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate you all for joining me today. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.